G'day! In this lesson, we will configure the book to author relationship. We have created the book and author functionalities for the bookstore application. However, there is currently no relationship between these entities. In this lesson, we will establish a one-to-many relationship between the author and the book entities. Let's open the books slash book dot cs in the domain project and add the following property to the book entity public good with the name author id in this lesson we prefer to not add a navigation property to the author entity for the book class like public author with the name author this is because we want to follow the ddd best practices and principles you can add such a navigation property and configure it using the EF call package if you wish. If you choose to use navigation properties, we don't need to write join queries while getting the books with their authors, which makes our application code simpler. We have added a new required author ID property to the book entity, but what about the existing books in the database? They currently don't have author IDs, and this will be a problem when we try and run the application. This is a typical migration problem, and the decision depends on your case. If you haven't published your application to the production yet, you can just delete existing books in the database, or you can even delete the entire database in your development environment. You can update the existing data programmatically on data migration or the seed phase or you can manually handle it on the database. We will prefer to delete the database by running the command drop hyphen database in the package manager console since it's our development environment and data loss is not important to us. We open bookstore db context model creating extensions class under the entity framework core folder of the entity framework core project and change the builder.entity off type book entity code with the following code. Let's run the following command in the PMC to add a new database migration. Add hyphen migration with the label added underscore author ID underscore two underscore book. We need to ensure that the entity framework.db migrations is set as default project in the PMC and the DB migrator is the startup project as always. This should create a new migration class in the up method. Basically this code adds an author ID field to the app books table, creates an index on the author ID field, and then declares the foreign key to the app authors table. Since the author ID is required property of the book entity, current data seeder code cannot work. So we will open the bookstore data seeder contributor in the acme.bookstore.domain project and change its content with the following code. The only change is that we set the author ID properties of the book entities. Let's delete the database before using the drop database command in the PMC and execute the DB migrator to migrate the new database schema and seed the initial data. We will now need to change the book app service to support the author relation. Let's modify the DTOs. Let's open the book DTO class in the books folder of the application.contracts project and add the following properties. We will also need to open the create update book DTO class in the books folder of the application.contracts project and add an author ID property as shown. Let's create a new class, author lookup DTO, inside the books folder of the application contracts project. This new method will be added to the iBook app service. So we open the iBook app service interface in the books folder of the application.contracts project and add a new method named get author lookup async using the following code. This new method will be used from the UI to get a list of authors and fill up a drop down list to select the author of the book. We will need to implement this get author lookup async method in the book app service. 
So we open the book app service class in the books folder of the application project and replace the file contents with the following code. We've added the authorize attribute with the argument bookstore permissions.books.default to authorize the methods we have newly created, added and overridden. Remember, authorize attribute is valid for all the methods of the class when it is declared in this way. We've also injected iAuthor repository to query the authors. We've also overridden the getAsync method of the base CRUD app service, which returns a single book DTO object with the given ID. We've also used the simple link expression to join the books and authors and query them together for a given book ID. We've also used the async executor.first or default async method to execute the query and get a result. Async executor was previously used in the author app service lesson. The get async method throws an entity not found exception which results in a HTTP 404 not found result if the requested book was not present in the database. Finally, get async method creates a book TTO object using the object mapper, then assigns the author name manually. We've also overridden the get list async method of the base CRUD app service, which returns a list of books. The logic is similar to the previous methods, so you can easily understand the code. We've also created a new method get author lookup async method. This simply gets all the authors. The UI uses this method to fill a drop-down list and select an author while creating or editing books. Since we have introduced the author lookup DTO class and used object mapping inside the get author lookup async method, so we need to add a new mapping definition inside the bookstore application auto mapper profile.cs file of the application project. Create map author to author lookup DTO. Some of the unit tests will fail since we've made some changes to the author app service. So we'll open the book app service underscore tests in the books folder of the application.test project and change its contents with the following code. We have changed the assertion condition in the should get list of books method from b lambda b dot name equals 1984 to b lambda b dot name equals 1984 and b dot author name equals George Orwell to check if the author name was filled in. We've also changed the should create a valid book method to set the author ID while creating a new book since now it's required to create a new valid book. We will now make the modifications to the Angular user interface. We will now ensure that our host project is running and run the following command abp generate dash proxy in the terminal window of Visual Studio Code. The command will update the service proxies under the src slash app slash proxy folder. Let's open the book.component.html file in the src slash app slash book folder and add the following column definition between the name and type columns. Let's now run the application by running the command yarn start. Let's navigate to the books page and we will see the authors column visible in the data table. Next, we will add the author selection dropdown to the create and edit forms. But before we do this, first we will change the contents of the book.component.ts file with the following code. We've made the following changes. Added imports for the author lookup DTO observable and map. Added the selected book property, which is basically a array of author lookup DTO, which is observable. Added the book service dot get author lookup dot pipe and map its items to the authors array in the constructor. Added the author ID and the validators dot required into the build form. So now that we've done all that, let's open the book.component.html file and add the following form group just before the book name. Let's run the application and try and modify the authors of the book to test the changes we've just made to the edit modal.
This was the last lesson in the course where we built the bookstore application using Angular and Entity Framework. I love the fact that we can use the AVP generate proxy and the ng generate commands to do most of the legwork for us. Hope you enjoyed this course. Thanks for watching.